Hi everybody, this is Drew Mazurk with Universal Audio. And in this video, I'm gonna cover a bunch of recording workflows. We're gonna talk about cues. We're gonna talk about low latency monitoring. We're gonna talk about effects in both console and in your DAW. So hopefully you're gonna find a lot of useful information in this video, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm gonna do a really simple example here to begin with, just recording my voice into a DAW. I wanna create a monitor mix to come out of the control room monitors, and we're gonna create a cue mix to simulate if I, the talent, were in a booth or in the studio. Everything we're about to describe here can be considered the Apollo workflow. And I still see on a day-to-day -day basis uh, a lot of people that aren't quite understanding why this is such a great way to work. So I want to really try and drive some of these things home and show you why it's worth it to work this way. So you've already seen one of the cool things about the Apollo workflow, and that is that I have signal immediately. This is a input persistence, right? So I just plug things in. I plug this mic in. I immediately get signal. I can be messing around with preamps. I can be messing around with processing. I can be adding effects. And my DAW is not even open. It's not even part of the equation right now. So that's advantage number one. This is really great for staying in the moment, staying inspired, picking up your guitar, picking up your keyboards, getting on the mic, and just sort of going, you know. So that's advantage number one. When I do bring the DAW into the equation, you'll see that I have my buffer set to 1024, the highest setting it can get, right? This buffer setting being at its highest allows the, the, the most CPU bang for your buck. So another huge benefit. You don't have to try and run your computer at a 32 or 64 sample buffer where it doesn't want to be. And a lot of DAWs don't like those low buffer settings because they tax the computer quite a lot. Okay, so the buffer is set really high. And normally that would cause a huge problem when you armed a track, right? Normally you would, if you were trying to monitor through the DAW, you, you know, know, you'd, you'd wind, wind up with, with something, something like this, this right? right? Or, or if you muted your, your direct monitoring, monitoring, you would have this delay, which, which is crazy, crazy right? right? So let me turn, turn that off because, because that, that is madness. madness. So low latency monitor mode mutes the software output. And in fact, other DAWs call this software monitoring or some, something like that. It's usually a checkbox somewhere in a preference or, an, or on a per channel basis like in Ableton. Pro Tools calls it low latency monitor. And as you can see, the track is armed, signals getting to the DAW, and I don't have to worry about latency because I'm monitoring direct. Okay, so before we make a recording, let's uh, come back here to console for a second and just talk about these cues. Uh, I have a single mic that's going to the monitor out here that we're listening to right there. But let's pretend that I'm the artist in the booth and I need my own mix and that this mix is for the engineer. That's the traditional you know, studio workflow. So I'm gonna come up here to my sends and I'm going to send to the queue. And of course you're not hearing that right now because we're monitoring the main output. So you'll just have to trust me on that. And if you're following along on your Apollo, you'll know that you are going to your queue, whatever you've got it assigned to. In my particular case, that signal, if I switch over to Q, I'm now monitoring in my headphones the cues because my headphones are plugged in right here. Each Q can be set to mix or Q. It can be monoed and it could also be routed to various headphones and mirrored out as we mentioned earlier. So now, uh, let me switch this back to mix. Now everybody hears what they need to hear. Artist has their own feed that is whatever they want it to be. The engineer has their own feed in the control room, whatever they want it to be, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna do a super simple recording here. Just going to count one, two, three, four. Play it back. One, two, three, four. So the monitor path where the monitor playback here is this fader here, right? So one, two, three, four. So this is the playback equivalent of this guy, right? And in fact, you want them to be the same. So if during the recording in the control room, this input fader needed to be at zero, then the playback should also be at zero. And then that way it's playing back at the same volume that you had. If you want it, if this needed to be at negative two, then your playback fader should be at negative two. 
this is actually kind of a cool thing because very often you might want to monitor something hotter during the record pass, but then on playback, hear how it's going to fit into the mix. I do that quite often. Now on the cue side, same thing. If your cue needed to be at zero for the artist to hear themselves appropriately, then your cue, playback cue, should also be at zero. This is a little confusing because this makes it look like it got muted, but if you look, one, two, you'll see three, four, that the output of Pro Tools, right, was, was going to the cue. So it's flowing back through our cue system. And of course, if I had that headphone I, on cue one or anybody that's in a headphone, any of these headphones, they're now going to hear that cue send. So we have it, it, monitor path, cue path for the, for the live inputs. And then we have our playback or monitor path and the cue path for the tape based playback. Okay. So let's do a punch in, um, I'm going to click and drag to select the word three and hold down option and click before and click after. And you'll notice that in doing that, I enabled pre-roll and post-roll as well as set it. These little flags here, they're super small. But again, if I select, click, the yellow flag moves to where I want it to be. Click, yellow flag moves. That's my pre-roll and my post-roll. Now I'm just going to hit the three key. And one, two, three. Now, you might have noticed that the four wasn't there. That's because we do have a little bit of latency in these, so your post-roll doesn't work there. A trick for that is I could put I could put uh, my effects in live track mode, which drops drops the latency, as you can see, down to 64 samples. One, two, three, four. I really don't care about that most of the time, so I very often don't bother. Each time you do that, you have to unarm and rearm. Okay, so let's take this example and let's add effects. Okay, so back in console, let's pretend we want to add some reverb. I come over here, bring up my aux a little bit, and you'll notice that we've got some of the awesome plate reverb here. The 140 I have going on in here. And if you'll remember from the last video, my artist in the booth immediately hears that because my template has the effects return sent to the queue. So now we have effects and we will hear that live while recording. I'm going to come over here and set myself up for the playback as well. And let's go ahead and play back what we have already first. One, two, three, four. So here, you'll notice that interestingly, my voice is being processed by this instantiation of the plate. And we can just turn that off right now in case that's getting on our nerves. Meantime, the, di the disc playback track, turn off pre-roll and post-roll. One, two, three. So now, by the way, if you want those settings to be the same, we can, which mine already are, but if you want them to be exactly the same, you can come up here and you can copy the settings, right? So we're going to come up into this little folder icon. We're going to go to copy. Now those settings are in the buffer and I'm going to come over to the version of it that's in Pro Tools. I'm going to hit paste. Of course, nothing happened because they're the same already, but that's how you do that. So this is now, I now have the same exact effect. Let me go ahead and put it back on here. I now have the same exact effect, minus 15 dB on that send. So in Pro Tools, I want to be in that same general area, which I basically am. And so now, when I go to do an overdub, let's go ahead and do that again. One, two, three. And so the disc track had the reverb as did my live overdub, and everybody's happy. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Uh, I think in a separate video, I'm gonna show you 
alternate ways of doing the things that I just showed you. And these alternate ways use virtual channels. But I think it, that's going to, if I get into that now, it's going to make this, it's going to bloat this video. So we're going to keep this video super simple and succinct. The only thing I do want to mention that I didn't mention is this concept of the inserts and whether or not they are printed. Most of you probably know uh, that the unison slot right up here, this is the special mic preamp or high Z input to your Apollo. The unison slot is always, always, always committed. It's always sent to your doll. It's a special slot. It's a marriage of software and hardware where the impedance is matched and the gain staging is matched. It's super cool technology that we developed many, uh, several years ago. And these slots are always printed no matter what. That's a good thing. Now, the inserts below that, you actually can choose either on a channel by channel basis, right? If I click on it and it turns blue, then I'm just monitoring. These are not sent to the DAW. If it's red, then they are sent to the DAW. We can do that on a per channel basis, or we can do it globally over here with our insert effects, our global buttons. So we'll get into that in the next video. Okay, so I think I've covered what I wanted to cover in this video and still keep it around that 10 to 12 minute mark, 13 minute mark, somewhere in there. So hopefully you found this one useful. Feel free to comment below and or in the thread on the forums. Thanks.